Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television, Channel 14. Thanks for watching. We're in the Hayes Middle School Library with Assistant Principal for Hayes Middle School, Shanna Dinkle, as we talk about the transition to the new Hayes Middle School. And Shanna, forgive me if during the entire segment here I uh, reference Felton half a dozen times. Well, we'll have to collect the money at the end because <laughs> we have a little fund in the office about anyone who uses Felton. Oh, uh, I see. Quarter, and then we're going to celebrate with that. But. So you'd better get on board yeah, then. Yeah, huh? or pay up. That's exactly <laughs> oh, right. My. Talk to us about the transition from Kennedy to Hayes Middle School, would you, since you were principal sure. for an interim period there? Yeah, well, I felt that it was a privilege to have the opportunity last year mm -hmm. to serve as principal at Kennedy Middle school um, I felt like it made a lot of sense to have someone there who could get to know the families the staff the students um, who we would then transition here so that there was that familiar face and it was shortly after school began you know it was on kids mind all year mm -hmm. you know the, the tradition the pride the love they had for Kennedy realizing that they would be leaving and one girl after school one day I was doing bus duty and she was nervous about coming to middle school and I said it'll be okay I'll be there she said oh well then it'll be okay if I know you'll be there just because of that familiar mm -hmm. face and someone and then as they realized their teachers would be here the mm -hmm. office staff would be here um, the counselor would come mm -hmm. then I think it made that transition um, a lot better for them so and as always whether they were Felton students or Kennedy students with the staff being here, teachers and such. They're going to be very supportive of these students and try to sure. help them in any way they oh, can yes. to make that move. Right. And anytime here, you know, you may not have that teacher in class, but anyone is willing to help mm -hmm. um, and help the kids and because they're they've been in here. <laughs> um, we're we haven't started school yet, but they have been in here and up mm -hmm. and looking around and getting their schedules and so it's good to see the smiles when they see that familiar face so that's great about this district too is that they have special open houses if you will mm -hmm. for new students incoming students students right. who are coming to a different grade you right. know uh, well and even last year with the transition we did in-service days where both staffs were together mm -hmm. during the year planning for this year we held two parent information nights um, for parents who were one wondering about what the change would be, both Kennedy families and Felton families, because it's different for both. Um, and so I feel like those things really did help ease anxieties, answer questions. And you know, even when I was at Kennedy, and then when I would share even at Felton here, I would talk about how, you know, my perspective of seeing both, we have more things that are the same than mm -hmm. that are different. We're still about teaching kids and the middle school philosophy. And so I think as last year evolved, we realized that, and as staff, we came up with core beliefs and we had each done it separately and looked at them together and mm -hmm. they were very similar so I really am excited about where we are now it's been neat to be up here and teachers have been busy all summer long as we all have our custodial staff secretaries just unpacking counselors especially with schedules but to see other people going and helping another person in mm -hmm. their room get the rooms together to me that's testimony that you know we're gonna have a great year and it'll be a, a great Great start. That's a great idea because when we, uh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, when we walked into the office it was just a buzz with activity, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people coming and going and yeah. getting uh, getting set for the new school year. That's right. How many numbers would you say approximately transferred uh, from Kennedy to the new Hayes Middle School? We will probably get about 130, 140 of the 230 we had. Mm -hmm. So I think we saw about 100 um, go to the Catholic middle mm -hmm. school and so that was nice for those families that there was that option but um, that will be added to about the 470 that were at Felton last year so we're looking at the Hayes Middle School of enrollment about 600. What about duties uh, as assistant principal have you got some specifics outlined yet? Well you know at the middle school here it's always mm -hmm. been a team effort so you know Craig Pallister the principal 
um, is great. At, we just bounce a lot of things off. So we share duties. Um, and so I can see that my duties will be to support the students, the staff, the families, especially here, try to ease into things. We have a lot going on beyond just moving buildings just within the district. You know, the state, we have new common core standards coming out. We're moving to a new assessment. Um, type here in a few years and so there's a lot going on just to keep curriculum instruction and assessment so I see my role as just helping guide those things along and supporting the staff and so it will be a great year but I'm looking forward to it it's nice to be um, you know one thing when I was at Kennedy being the only person it's nice to have Craig and I together to just kind of bounce ideas. So he was a good resource for me last year. We were just down the road a little bit. Has your family been supportive of your change? Yes, always. I always tell people I couldn't do this job if they weren't because of the extra duties and supervision. But no, my husband and kids have been supportive and um, enjoy coming up to school and seeing things. They're always amazed at how many people I know when we're out and about <laughs> at the store. Mom, you know everyone. I'm like, well, you know, that just comes with the job. So. It does indeed. Yeah. I don't even need to ask this question because it's already evident that you are excited for this new school year. I am. I am very <laughs> excited for the opportunities and just staff getting to know each other, brainstorming the collaboration mm -hmm. that will take place. You know, we have team grade level teams here, which really helps support students. I know, you know, it's it seems like a huge number, but when you you have a core team of teachers that are looking at students on a daily basis and, and looking at their needs and, and what they need. It really um, doesn't seem so big. And so those grade level teams have already been meeting and collaborating. And so to me, we've taken the best of both schools and we're going to put them together into one. And so it will be, it will be a great thing for Hayes and I'm glad you kids. mentioned that specific, uh, Shana, because uh, uh, parents might be thinking, wow, 600 students, you know, is my student going to be lost? But the way it's been designed right. at Hayes Middle School, that it really is more of a smaller core group. Right to be able to track those students and make sure they're uh, they're doing well. Right, and we have the two counselors, you know, we, we that support staff is huge, and so they will um, have certain students assigned to them, but still work together and we'll work with the teams. And we also have a teacher advisory program. We call it TA here, it was homeroom at Kennedy, mm -hmm. but that's a middle school philosophy, and that's one more adult advocate that every student has, and they start the day with them, and that's one more person to keep an eye on them and make sure that you know, we are um, supporting them and, and taking care of those social, emotional, and all that stuff that goes along with not just the academics, there's so much more, but that connection and relationship making with kids, which really makes a difference at this age. So when we hear those school notes as TA, that means the time right. the student teacher has advisory. with the teacher That's advisor. Right. Um, talk about some challenges uh, with the move and with the change. Uh, what challenges do you see? You know, as far as the challenges this past year was just communication and, and making sure everyone felt like they were part of the process. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, keeping people informed was important. Mm -hmm. um, I think the challenges now are just getting settled. You know, space is a challenge, but um, beyond that, just not feeling too overwhelmed and just keeping that focus on what we know, what we believe, and making sure we, you know, take care of those individual needs and maximize instruction. Like I said, I think part of the challenge is everything else happening at the same time with common core standards, assessments changing. There's so much. And so just to kind of, you know, keep a handle on that and, and encourage everyone that will take it a bit at a time. And somehow we always do it right. I mean, Hayes, the schools are amazing and our test scores have been amazing and, and teachers and, and students and staff, they always rise to the challenge. So I really think that we, with teamwork and collaboration, it will be a good thing. And in that framework of such great success that the USD 489 district has had, in the face of continuing budget problems, budget cuts, mm -hmm. restrictions, and, uh, and really getting in the way of providing what students need, whether it's staff, whether it's salaries, whether it's, uh, you know, supplies and things like right. that has been right. a real challenge. It has. You know, you would think combining the two schools, we would have lots of different options and we were all excited about elect as well as re resignations and retirements came throughout the district. You know, there are some staff here that are pooled to help at the elementary or the high school level. So our elective classes are getting large and that cut into that. So you're right, whether it's lots of different challenges we face, we just, 
you know, no one wants to whine and complain. I guess what good will that do? We just take it on and, and hopefully though we are talking to the people who can make a difference and get that message across because, you know, we'll just continue to do I guess more with less and somehow get it done right because it's about the kids. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the work ethic and the professionalism like um, our district has displayed and teachers, that will continue. People in the district yeah, step pride up in once that, again. So, mm -hmm. you bet. Uh, finally, how about the challenge? You mentioned some of the challenges that are ahead. What about the challenge of working with uh, Principal Craig Pallister. Yeah. <laughs> Are you up for that? Oh, you know, I had a little bit of time off here in July. Got a lot of rest. <laughs> so the trick will be keeping up with him. He's always on the move. So He um, is indeed. And we'll yeah. talk to the uh, principal at Hayes Middle School in just a few minutes. We wish you the best well, of the new you. school year. Shanna Dinkle, assistant principal at Hayes Middle School. For Community Connection, we'll take a break, come back and talk with the principal, Craig Pallister. You're watching Community Connection from Eagle Community Television, Channel 14. Back in a moment. Eagle has more of what you watch in HD. Eagle has just added more than a dozen new HD channels, including VH1, CMT, Spike, Comedy Central, AMC, MSNBC, Turner Classic Movies, and NASA TV. Now you can watch all your favorite channels in crystal clear, high definition. As always, Eagle is the home of free HD. For information on this Eagle Advantage, visit EagleCom.net or call 877-61-EAGLE today. Welcome back. Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall, as we visit at Hayes Middle School with Principal Craig Pallister, who now is 20 years at what used to be Felton and now Hayes Middle School, Craig? It seems like I just moved to Hayes. Uh, we moved here 20 years ago when my daughters were just starting to enter school. Now both of them are in college. So it has gone fast these 20 years in Hayes. How about uh, this new Hayes Middle School? What can students expect when they come, Craig? We're excited about Hayes Middle School. Uh, all the opportunities that exist for uh, students at Hayes Middle School in the classrooms, in the activities, just uh, with the staff and the teachers here in the building, there will be a lot of new opportunities. We have done uh, things in the classrooms to allow for more time, more organization in the classrooms. We're putting in after school activities. We just at the board meeting Monday night uh, had seventh and eighth grade cross country approved. So we'll have seventh and eighth graders involved in cross country for the first time. Also, uh, we are uh, looking at adding seventh grade sports for the following year, not this coming year, but the following mm -hmm. year. So uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for students that are in the building this year that we have not had previously. Well, and you're going to be able to add to the numbers of those activities too, like increased band, right. increased orchestra, increased uh, drama clubs, things like that. Right. We're now we're able to have a sixth grade band and a seventh grade band and an eighth grade band and break down the orchestra groups. We've got an audition choir group now uh, during the school day as well as the after school. So we just keep uh, adding things that kids will have more opportunities to do this year. And that's really the, the key to a successful student, isn't it, Craig, to be able to involve them in their school and in the activities? We have found if kids are connected to their school somehow with a teacher, with an organization, with a class, they do better uh, and their attendance is better, their grades are better. And so uh, that thing, we want students to participate in something, whether it's our STUCO, uh, uh, that's during the day, our intramural program, our instructional league program, our music programs, our quiz bowl. They just need to be a part of the school. What can parents expect uh, with the new Hayes Middle School, Craig? Parents, they, I, we really want parents involved with Hayes Middle School. Uh, both uh, uh, schools previously had strong parent uh, home and school associations. We. I've always been quoted as saying, we need the parents more involved at middle school. It's probably as, 
as important as the elementary school or even more important because this is the age that they're doing more activities. Uh, they uh, are coming back up to school in the evenings, different things, and we need the parents on the same page or supporting their kids all the way through school. I'm glad you emphasized that because you have been a strong advocate of parental involvement, uh, not only with their child and school, but in the school itself. Right. Right, we want uh, parents up here, not only at the home and school meeting, but at our dances, uh, uh, during the day at our assemblies. A lot of the teachers uh, ask parents to come up and work in the classrooms on spatial uh, uh, projects, different things like that. So as we had parents coming through uh, enrollment last week, we had them signing up. Hopefully they'll be a part of the school. And uh, what we always, tell parents and other people in the community the best way to see what's happening at Hayes Middle School is come up when the kids are here the teachers are here and Shannon and I will give you a tour anytime whether you're a grandparent a community member but if you could see our kids our teachers our staff in action that's when you know what the good things are here. And uh, speaking of that, you're actually going to have a formal ribbon cutting with the Hayes Chamber. We are going to have a formal ribbon cutting. Uh, that's going to be exciting to be able to uh, have the community come in and see the new building as well as the existing building because there's a lot of changes. and. Uh, we are doing a lot with the new staff to the building and the staff that has been here previously. Everybody is making changes this year. It doesn't matter if you have taught in this building for 20 years or whether this will be the first year, there will be changes. There, uh, everything that first day will be new. And that can be both good and bad, I guess. I mean, it can be a little scary, not only for the students, but for the staff. Right? The anxiety <laughs> level is up a little bit. Uh, if you walk around our hallways, I have never seen our school look so good in the classrooms mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of our staff take a well-deserved break over the summertime, and they come back the 1st of August, and they're working in rooms two or three weeks before school, but we had teachers have their rooms set up in the middle of July this year. You could have walked into a lot of our rooms in July and it looked like the first day of school because there's that anxiety level. I'm in a new building. I have new uh, teachers beside me in the classrooms and everybody wants to put their best foot forward. And Craig, some of us would call that dedication. Yeah, it is, it is. Uh, like I, I talk to our summer staff, it usually is lonely up here in the summertime. Shannon takes a little bit of break and Amy and I are the only ones up here a lot of times. Not this summer. Mm -hmm. We have been up here with staff all summer. I w easily, if you would come up the first week in July, there would probably have been 10 teachers in rooms mm -hmm. uh, during that month. How's staffing uh, for the new school year at Hayes Middle School, Craig? We are, we are, we have a tremendous staff. We got to put the uh, staff together last spring before we uh, uh, closed down really both buildings mm -hmm. and uh, had some meetings and got everybody involved in teams. Uh, our, we're looking at uh, having a good mix uh, at our core classes or our elective classes. We're able to offer some classes that we've never been able to offer before, uh, some communications classes, some drama type communications classes, some booster and enrichment at math classes and reading. So our staffing is good. We have had to reduce staff a little bit uh, just because of the budgets uh, going through. So we lost two teachers to retirement. We lost one that moved out of town and we didn't fill those three positions. So actually we're down three teachers uh, from where we were, but we're getting a little bit of help. We're pulling a high school teacher over here for half of a day, and uh, we have uh, some of our staff going out to the high school for parts of the day, so we're working with all the other schools. I know with uh, the board, USD 489 Board of Education, dealing with uh, budgetary issues on a regular basis, uh, the state not quite frankly, stepping up to the level that it should based on Supreme Court rulings of the past, that budget is always a problem now. That is always an issue right now. Uh, I'm hoping that the 
the state comes through and supports public education the way it should be uh, because if you look back uh, we're being funded right now uh, really at the level it was probably 10 years ago and with the increased numbers of kids and all the needs for technology and just keeping updated uh, that is always a need and our school board and Dr. Roth work very hard on this issue because I attend all the school board meetings and that is probably one of the main things our school board and our uh, central administration works very hard in is getting the funding that we need. And parents can really play a, a very big role in this by putting pressure right. on legislators and lawmakers to make sure that public education is well represented. Right, and our local legislators have done an outstanding job, but they're just one vote mm -hmm. or two votes. And so, uh, yeah, elections, uh, our teachers, uh, a lot of times email write our legislators even the governor and saying here's our valuable kids and we can't wait three years because they'll be out of school or they'll be at the next level so we need to help our kids that are in school now Craig you mentioned uh, here in our final uh, couple of minutes you mentioned the uh, uh, changes in the building and such uh, and talk a little more about those Of course obviously we have the new classrooms now uh, which many people are aware of but this is going to be a nice addition to be able to accommodate the move from Kennedy yeah we have six outstanding new classrooms and restrooms uh, over on our west side I guess you'd call it our west edition over by the west uh, parking lot that leads from our music rooms into there we have redone some of our other classroom settings to meet the needs of our kids around the building whether it is our special needs kids or whether our regular ed we've been able to restructure some of the building uh, moving uh, another 150 kids into our cafeteria. We have redone the cafeteria a little bit. We're in the project right now of air conditioning our uh, kitchen for our cafeteria workers, which has been needed big time for the last forever since mm -hmm. this building because they cook for uh, approximately a thousand kids not just our kids but they cook for a lot of the other elementaries uh, also and then we have the project that will be uh, moving forward this fall with uh, building eight storm shelter classrooms on the east side of our building and even with the six new classrooms, we are tight in space right now with the new kids and the new staff. We are having teachers teach in te other teachers' classrooms during their planning periods. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, a, for instance, I've got uh, Mrs. Fondensteel that will be teaching math in three different rooms, and she will have a desk in another room because she we do not have any empty rooms. When we get the new storm shelter classrooms, it will be great for classroom setups and by uh, the projection of the district by the time they're built in two years we will have 700 kids instead of 600 kids in this building and with the knowledge that if we ever have a tornado or a storm that uh, threatens this building we will be able to have all of our student staff safe in, a, uh, in that setting. I'm glad you mentioned the transition that some teachers have to go through because this uh, really impacts the ability of the teacher. Uh, imagine if you're in your workplace and you've got desks in three different locations in an office, you know. Where do you put the materials you need to do the job you need to do? We have a couple of different teachers, or three or four, that will have carts and they will be going down the hallways with the students between classes on carts whether it is like I mentioned a math teacher going from room to room or we have a couple of computer teachers that will be going from room to room our vocal music teacher and music teachers will be using different rooms uh, uh, during different teachers planning periods so we're making the most out of the building and I have not heard one uh, really teacher upset by it because everybody is just so excited about the new well, start. Well, they, they know what job needs right. to be done, right. don't they? And still the focus on the students. Finally, Craig, if you would, and I know uh, you'd like to emphasize this, you've talked about it a little bit. Give, some par give parents some tips on what 
as a professional educator you think parents can do to help their children navigate middle school? The biggest one for their parents to talk to is to, if you're having problems, tell someone. I talked with our sixth graders that were here for orientation yesterday, and I said there's 75 adults in this building. Custodians, secretaries, teachers, parents, ask any adult in this building and they will help you. Uh, they, uh, our staff is just outstanding. We have new secretaries over in our building that act like mothers for our 600 <laughs> students. We have paras and teachers that they will drop what they're doing. Our custodians, uh, sometimes I ask them, what did you get done yesterday? Not as much as I'd like to because I was helping kids. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what could else? That's, That's what they need to be doing. That's great. Um, Craig, we thank you for the visit. And once again, uh, best of luck on the new uh, year at Hayes Middle School for you, the teachers, and the staff. Finally, uh, let's show off what Hayes Middle School t-shirts are going to look like. Tell me about this and uh, I'll hold it up while you uh, tell us about the new Hayes Middle School. We have our new Hayes Middle School uh, t-shirt with our uh, Falcon here with HMS because that's what everybody's calling us now. Mm -hmm. HMS uh, goes along right with HHS mm -hmm. with uh, Hayes High School. We are still the Falcons and our motto on the back of the t-shirts this year and this has been is really important is believe. I, because I said the principal myself is not going to say you must believe in this but we're going to come up with hundreds or thousands of belief statements and goals set by our kids and our teachers and I've started out with our sixth graders yesterday saying I believe this is going to be the best year ever at middle school in Hayes and I want them to fill in what they believe. Craig Pallister, principal at Hayes Middle School. Thanks to producer Jeff Durall and thanks to you for watching Community Connection from Eagle Community Television.